What is going on, everyone? I'm at the Guilford County Military Park in Greensboro, North Carolina today, and there's some things I've been wanting to look for here. Uh, this is, of course, is one of the Revolutionary War sites, and there's a lot of Revolutionary War history here, so we're gonna walk around and see what we can find. Stick with me. Guilford Courthouse National Military Park. There's the American side and there's the British. The British, the Redcoats. And actually, uh, you know, the War of 1812, you know, we ended up fighting again and those guys ended up burning down the White House in 1814. And luckily, in three years, about 1817, it was rebuilt. Sir? Oh. You run it the door there? Yeah. Here's some monuments we're coming up on. Captain James Moorhead of the 10th Regiment, North Carolina Continental Line. Born 1750, died in 1815. And here is a lady, uh, Mrs. Karen Hapak Turner, mother of Elizabeth, the wife of Joseph Moorhead, okay. And grandmother of Captain James and John Moorhead. North Carolina soldier under Green, I assume it's referring to Nathaniel Green. That's a nice statue. Yeah, hopefully nobody tears these down, huh? Oh, there's some, oh look! Look in the woods. There's soldiers. Like the silhouette of, of a soldier running. And then there's one there with his uh, artillery. Let's check out, we'll circle around. Let's check these out. Gillies, Light Horse, Harry Lee's. Some of this is in Latin, it looks. This S to Pro. Who fell under the swords of Tarleton's dragons. So that was the of course, the British, a name for a, a British platoon, I guess. And I'm sorry some, if I incorrectly describe some of this. Like I said, I'm not as uh, knowledgeable with uh, Revolutionary War. I do. I have been learning, and I have learned a lot about a lot of it uh, through the last decade just through reading various books and internet sites and then of course 1776 is the year we gained our independence from Britain pretty cool so it's like you kind of get a little you get to see well, it's like monument row I'm gonna go, let's go through, I'm gonna cut through here and... Yeah, because of the pandemic, the, the building uh, is closed. Uh, the office, or information center. It's 
kind of a recreation of what they would have been looking like running through these woods and fighting. Well anyway, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go try to find William Hooper's monument and possible grave. I, I don't know if he's buried at his monument, but he is buried on these grounds. He was one of three signers of uh, the Declaration, uh, one of three from North Carolina. You know, each state of the 13 colonies had so many signers, you know, and uh, North Carolina had three and he was one of three. I think Pennsylvania and Virginia had the most. I think Pennsylvania had seven or eight and Virginia had, had uh, eight or nine. Uh, you know, I could be, I, I know it's kind of rough, that's a rough estimate, but I think that's kind of, I just know, I do know we have three, and anyway, let's try to find his grave. This is a cool little placard, local hero, look at the neat artwork there. Well, yeah, I wanted to get some little footage of it and, you know, Okay, like I said, we had three signers, one being William Hooper, who I've done a video on uh, on his original gravesite in Hillsboro, North Carolina. But he, like I said, he was one of three. Jo Joseph Hughes was another, and John Penn was the other. They were all prominent lawyers. Actually, William Hooper eventually gave up his seat in Congress and went back to practicing law. Uh, later on. Um, the other two guys, I don't know as much about their history, but they are they are signers of, uh, there's 56 signers in total, and these are three of the 56. But anyway, that is the monument erected for William Hooper. Okay, yeah, so this says that their, their remains, oh, John Penn's remains are here too. Their remains were re-entered here in 1894. Hugh's grave is lost. He was the third signer. Oh, that's sad. So, I guess they are, I guess they were buried under the monument I uh, or the remains I, you know like I said his remains he was uh, buried for the longest it sounds like he was buried for a good century at, <laughs> close to uh, in Hillsboro his grandson is still there beside where his grave still is they still have his tomb and his name still on his tomb so you can still see that So he's holding a he's holding the declaration in his hand it looks like hmm. it's beautiful out here though Trails everywhere. Good place to go walk. No, that is the oh, that is the statue of monument for Nathaniel Green, who the city of Greensboro is named after. He was a major general under George Washington, one of his top generals, and. One of the reasons we were able to gain independence, our independence is having men like him. I, yeah, as soon as they're gone, I can, they're taking pictures and I'll go out there in a little bit. That is so huge. Pretty cool, they have lights that if you come at night or in the evening, they shine on it. That'd be look pretty cool to see. But that is 
Major General Nathaniel Green. You'd have to see this in person to see how huge it actually is. Corn, oh, General Cornwallis. But yep, this is who Greensboro's named after. Look at the details, like. It is with a pleasure which friendship alone is acceptable of that I congratulate you on the glorious end you have put to hostilities in the southern states. So George, Wa that's a quote from George Washington. I want to see. I wanted to show you all the Guilford Courthouse. There's the other side of it. And here is another statue. See who this lady is. I guess she's the Lady of Liberty, huh? Of American Liberty. That is really, the intricate detail, detail is really, really awesome. I wonder if it has the artist on it. Okay, it does. Oh, 1914, by F.H. Packer. I wonder if there's any information on... That is too awesome. But if you're ever in the Greensboro area, I highly recommend you check this out.